CT Physics and Imaging, a Guide for Technologists, Chapter 12, Cranium and Facial Imaging, CT of the Head. A routine CT head may include a variety of imaging sequences and may be indicated for a number of concerns. A routine head is generally performed without contrast, although for specific indications it may be performed both without and with contrast. At most institutions, a routine head scan will actually include algorithms for viewing both the bones of the cranium and the soft tissues of the brain, which is why this protocol is included here in cranial imaging. Indications. CT of the head is for initial evaluation of stroke, headache, vertigo, seizures, unresponsiveness, confusion, etc. The scan type is axial. Axial is most common, but helical and volume scans are increasing in use. Slice parameters. One common example is 2.5 millimeter slice thicknesses through the posterior fossa, with 5 millimeters through the vertex with matching slice intervals. The brain and cranium should always be evaluated with slices 5 millimeters in thickness or less. Gantry tilt should be parallel to the supraorbital meatal line to avoid the lens of the eye. Contrast. For traumatic injury, stroke, or general survey, scan without contrast only. And that's because fractures and hemorrhagic strokes are best visualized without contrast. MRI is the preferred imaging method for a mass. Perform CT head with and without only when MRI is contraindicated. Algorithm. Reconstruct both standard and bone reconstructions. Window. For the standard algorithm, use an 80 window width and 30 window level. For the bone algorithm, use 2500 window width and 600 window level. Imaging of the brain and cranium is often improved with sagittal and coronal reformations. Be aware that CT head is usually the first procedure for neurological concerns, but not always. CT is preferred for initial evaluation of stroke, trauma, and mental status change, but MRI may be indicated when soft tissue pathologies, like tumors, are strongly suspected. As with all procedures, it's essential to process the cranium and brain with the correct algorithm and display these images with the appropriate window width and window level. This principle is evident in figure 12.1 and 12.2. Figure 12.1. The bone window shows a linear skull fracture in the left temporal bone due to trauma. The brain window demonstrates an epidural hemorrhage in the same area. Epidural bleeding is usually the result of traumatic skull fractures. Figure 12.2. This patient has experienced a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The bone window shows the bullet penetrating the skull through the frontal sinus. Small areas of beam-hardening metal artifact are debris from the bullet. The brain window shows intracranial bleeding focused in the frontal lobe and left anterior parietal lobe, all near the point of entry. Blood, which is 40 Hounsfield units, appears brighter than the brain matter, which is 20 Hounsfield units, because of a slight difference in density. In figures 12.1 and 12.2, the cranium image is processed using a bone algorithm for edge enhancement. This increases visibility of cranial fractures that are nearly invisible in the standard algorithm. This image is displayed with 2500 window width and 600 window level to enhance the visibility of bones. The brain window uses a standard algorithm to suppress image noise and create a smoother image. This image is displayed with an 80 window width and 30 window level to increase visibility of the soft tissues of the brain. It's common to create volume renderings of the cranium to demonstrate skull fractures. To create the best 3D images, it might be necessary to retrospectively create a special series with these parameters. Thin slices, overlapping interval, and smoothing algorithm. The use of thin, overlapping slices avoids a blocky appearance in the 3D images. Notice that a smoothing algorithm should be used for a 3D rendering, even when the bones are to be viewed. The bone algorithm creates too much image noise to be useful in 3D imaging. An example of the appropriate 3D technique is in figure 12.3. Figure 12.3. This patient has a depressed skull fracture affecting the frontal bone with collapse of the frontal sinus. Unlike linear skull fractures, this injury has resulted in bone fragments forced into the cranial cavity. 
CT orbits. A typical CT orbit scan is performed to examine the orbits and bones surrounding the orbits. Indications may include trauma or other abnormalities. Indications include proptosis, which is eye bulging, pain, vision changes, and other abnormalities. The scan type is usually helical. The slice parameters is usually 1.25 millimeter slice thickness with matching slice interval. The gantry tilt should be parallel to the hard palate. Concerning contrast, scan with IV contrast at 60 seconds post injection. An orbit scan for trauma should be performed without contrast. The algorithm should be both standard and bone reconstructions. Windowing. The standard algorithm should be displayed with 400 window width and 40 window level. The bone algorithm should be displayed with 2500 window width and 60 window level. Remember to perform coronal and sagittal reformations of both the standard and bone data sets. CT imaging of the orbits only for trauma is unusual, since traumatic injuries often affect other areas of the face. For this reason, CT facial bones protocols is a more appropriate scan for trauma. IV contrast is required when evaluating the eyes for infection or other soft tissue concerns. Figure 12.4. This CT orbit study demonstrates a blowout fracture affecting the left orbit. A blow to the left eye caused the orbital contents to burst through the roof of the maxillary sinus. The bone window was created with the bone algorithm and displayed at 2500 window width and 600 window level. The soft tissue window was created using the standard algorithm and displayed at 400 window width and 40 window level. For soft tissue imaging of the orbits, the window level is set to about 40 to match the appropriate Hounsfield units of the tissues in and around the eyes. For bone imaging, the window level is set to about 600 to match the average Hounsfield units of the bone. The window width controls the contrast. The maximum visibility of most soft tissues, excluding the brain, is about 400 window width. Maximum visibility of bone is at about 2,500 window width. Figure 12.5. This scan was performed to evaluate proptosis of the right eye. There is a large mass growing from the greater wing of the sphenoid bone. Both the soft tissue window and the bone window show a feathering appearance on the outer border of the tumor. Figure 12.6. This is the same patient as figure 12.5. The image was created using the reformatting tool to orient the anatomy in a true axial. Note the improved symmetry of the sphenoid bone. Thinner slices were also used to reduce partial volume averaging. CT facial bones. The most common reason for performing a CT of the facial bones is trauma. But facial abscess, especially dental abscess, is also a common indication. As with all scans of the cranium, non-contrast exams are used for trauma, and IV contrast is used for most other non-traumatic indications. Indications include facial trauma, mass, swelling, and other abnormalities. The scan type is helical. The slice parameter is 1.25 millimeter slice thickness with matching slice interval. Gantry tilt should be parallel to the hard palate. Contrast. Scan with IV contrast at 45 seconds post-injection to evaluate swelling, abscess, or mass. Facial scans for trauma are performed without contrast. Algorithm. Perform both standard and bone reconstructions. Windowing. The standard algorithm should be displayed with a 400 window width and 40 window level. The bone algorithm should be displayed with 2500 window width and 600 window level. Perform coronal and sagittal reformations of both the standard and bone data sets. The facial bones protocol is substantially identical to the orbits protocol. The main difference is the area of interest. For facial bones, the lower limit of the scan and the DFOV are both increased to include the entire mandible. The contrast scan delay time can be slightly earlier for the facial bones. Figure 12.7. These images are different slice levels within the same facial bone series. The first image shows substantial beam hardening metal artifact from dental work. The second image shows the effect of trauma to the right eye, maxillary fracture, fluid accumulation in the maxillary sinus, and some subarachnoid air. Figure 12.8. CT facial bones imaging of a really bad day. 
The first image demonstrates facial fractures of the orbital floor, which is the maxillary roof, the lateral orbit, which is the zygoma, and the floor of the maxillary sinus. The same fractures are visible in the volume rendered image. Figure 12.9. CT facial bone imaging demonstrates facial fractures of the lateral orbit, the zygoma, the lateral maxillary sinus, and the mandible. The same fractures are visible in the volume rendered images. CT sinuses direct coronal. Imaging of the sinuses is extremely similar to the facial bones, but with three exceptions. One, CT sinuses do not include the mandible. Two, CT sinuses use thicker slices, and three, CT sinuses should be performed with the patient in the coronal position in the scanner. If possible, the patient lies prone on the scanner table with their chin up. This allows coronal images to be acquired directly and provides better visualization of air fluid levels in the sinuses. Indications for CT sinuses include sinusitis and sinus pain. The scan type is helical. The slice parameter is 3.75 millimeter slice thickness with matching slice interval. The gantry tilt is perpendicular to the hard palate. Contrast, none is required. If the patient has a suspected mass, CT facial bones should be performed with contrast. The algorithm is bone only. Windowing, the bone algorithm should be displayed with 2500 window width and 600 window level. If the patient cannot lie prone, he or she should be scanned supine and coronal images should be created through the reformation process. All sinuses should be included in the scan as well as the mastoid air cells. Acute or chronic sinusitis is the most common indication for this procedure. Acute sinusitis is visible as clear fluid levels in the sinuses, especially the maxillary sinus. Chronic or long-term sinusitis generally presents as mucosal thickening without a definite air fluid level. Figure 12.10. The first patient has clear maxillary sinuses. The second patient has bilateral mucosal thickening without air fluid levels, indicating chronic sinusitis. Beam hardening artifact from dental fillings is demonstrated in the upper teeth. Figure 12.11. All paranasal sinuses are demonstrated in the axial view on the same patient. The frontal sinuses are clear. The ethmoid sinus have mucosal thickening. The sphenoid sinus has a small amount of mucus accumulation. The left maxillary sinus has an air fluid level, indicating acute sinusitis. The case in figure 12.11 was performed with the patient in a supine position on their back, so the images were not acquired directly in a coronal plane. This is not the preferred protocol, but the resulting images still strongly confirm acute sinusitis. CT temporal bones. A CT scan of the temporal bones requires a heightened attention to detail. If you'd like to know what it feels like to be squashed by the ego of a radiologist, please feel free to make changes to the protocol. The temporal bone scan is designed to identify tiny changes in the mastoid air cells, internal auditory canal, and the inner ear. Like CT sinuses, the patient lies prone on the scanner table with their chin up. This allows coronal images to be acquired directly with superior spatial resolution. Indications include pain, ataxia, and hearing loss. The scan type is helical. Slice parameters. This should be 0.625 millimeter slice thickness with a 0.315 slice interval. This results in overlapping slices and ultra high spatial resolution. The gantry tilt is perpendicular to the hard palate and acquired in a direct coronal position, parallel to the hard palate if scanned in the supine position. Contrast, none should be used. Algorithm is bone only. Windowing, the bone algorithm should be displayed with a 2500 window width and 600 window level. If the patient cannot lie prone, he or she should be scanned supine and coronal images should be created through the reformation process. Figure 12.12. .12. The first image is a coronal image of the bilateral temporal bones acquired directly with the patient in the prone position. The second image is an isolated reformation of just the right internal auditory canal in the axial plane.